so this is what I've learned in seven years of podcasting about Ruby. Um, I'm going to give you a brief history, and then I'll talk about some of the lessons I've learned. Uh, but first, I'd like to thank the RailsConf organizers for putting me right in the middle of nap time. I really appreciated that. And in case you're wondering, yes, this is my son a couple of years ago. And yes, he is face down on the floor. He just fell asleep there like that. But anyway, um, going to have lots of pictures of my kids and stuff too. So it's, it's not a super serious talk. Um, but yeah, I figure um, as I was talking to people, they were like, well, you're, you're at the same time slot as Sandy met. So I figured out that you all must be one of these three groups. You're either a diehard Ruby Rogues fan, for which I thank you if you are. Um, you don't know who Sandy is, or your overflow from her talk, or you didn't want to hear about nothing or something or something or nothing. Um, or you didn't realize that uh, we have a rock star next. In fact, it wasn't fair for them to put Kent after me, because I mean, that's just a hard act to follow. But, you know, so you didn't know that you had to save like front row seats to see Kent. Um, ultimately, the purpose of this talk, though, is to inspire you to go out and uh, contribute to the community however you're going to do it. And so these are lessons that I've learned as I have been involved in podcasting over the years. Um, over the last four years, um, I've been involved in these shows, and those are the stickers that are up here as well. Um, Ruby Rogues, we started four years ago. Um, I'll talk about kind of the origin story there. Uh, JavaScript Jabber and the Freelancer Show started about eight months after that in January of 2012. And then um, I started iFreaks about a year and a half after that. And then um, Adventures in Angular started in July. So if you are interested in that, then that's been growing pretty rapidly. When I got started, I started a podcast called Rails Coach. This is not the original artwork. I had this done later because I planned on relaunching it, and I never did. Um, and then I also took over Teach Me to Code, which was screencasts about how to build things in Ruby on Rails. And I'll talk a little bit more about those as well. But uh, did anyone listen to or watch any of these? These two? Yeah, a few people. So yeah, I mean, it's, it's been kind of this wild ride. And I renamed Rails Coach to Teach Me to Code. And then I started another show called Rails Coach. And yeah, it's been this crazy thing. And then my latest project has been Rails Clips. And uh, we just did a Kickstarter campaign for that, we being I, I guess. And uh, the idea is, is that we don't have Railscast anymore. I wish there was Railscast, so I decided to do that. And so I'm going to be putting out videos every week. Uh, you can subscribe just like Railscast Pro. And hopefully, we can cover topics that are interesting to you in ways that we can't really do with the audio format. But um, ultimately, I'm just going to tell you my story. So these are my kids. This was also a few years ago. Um, and uh, I think she was three or four. And yeah, she was reading a story to her one-year-old brother. Um, the story of me getting into podcasting is it started when I was working for a company called Mosey. Now, Mosey, they do online backup. I'm not going to tell you the long and sordid tale about how I wound up in QA. But I was working QA, and there was um, the other person in QA that I was working with at the time. He got one of these brand new devices. And it looked about like that, too. And it was like this mind-blowingly cool technology that they don't even make them like that anymore. But um, he started listening to podcasts. And so I'd be sitting at my desk working, and he'd be sitting in the other corner of a very small room working. And he'd be laughing at stuff that people were saying. And so I figured out pretty fast that, oh, he's listening to podcasts. And so I was like, well, I can't afford an iPod, but this sounds like fun. And so he explained to me that I didn't need to go get an iPod. I could listen to them off of iTunes. And so I got a little Mac Mini, put it on my desk which ultimately led to me running the uh, beta test for the Mac client. For, but anyway, um, and I started listening to podcasts. And it was really interesting because I started finding podcasts about things I was interested in. Um, one of them that some of you may have listened to, in fact, show of hands, how many of you listened to Rails Envy way back in the day? 
right, with Greg Pollock. So I was really new. I had done Ruby on Rails for like a year before I was in QA. And I was super excited about this show. And I thought, oh, everybody in Rails is like so much better than me. And these guys are celebrities. But I decided, what the heck, I'm going to try something new and I'm going to start a podcast. Another side note, this is a hamburger with egg and bacon on it. And if you look real close, the bun is a donut. <laughs> Donuts. So anyway, uh, it was actually pretty good. Anyway, so, um, so I decided to try something new. So I knew zero about podcasting. I'd been developing Ruby on Rails for like a year. It wasn't even my full-time job for the, the duration I did it. Um, so I had no experience with any of it. And I emailed Greg. And I was like, Greg Pollock, you are awesome. I want to start a podcast. I want to talk about Rails. I don't want to start another Rails NB podcast. So what do I do? And what surprised me was that he came back and he said, that's awesome. You should start a podcast. And here are some ideas. And he basically encouraged me to do a show where I would interview other developers. And so I reached out to somebody that I had already been in contact with. And Greg was the first interview I did for that show. So the first one, the first episode was what I thought made a good developer, and the next one was Greg Pollock. Well, about three episodes later, I interviewed James Gray. You can kind of see where this is going, right? Um, and he offered me a bunch of feedback on the way that I did the show, which kind of changed the way that I approached things. And one other highlight, I was actually at RailsConf. It was like 2008 or 2009. I don't remember exactly the year, but I was walking through the crowd. It was like the second day of RailsConf. And there was this empty seat right next to this guy. And I was like, I would love to interview David Hirenmeyer Hansen. So I sat down next to him and started talking to him. And uh, as a new Rails developer, you can imagine, who, who here thinks David is intimidating? Maybe a little bit? Yeah, so I was scared to death. And I, I sat down. and. I started talking to him, and I was like, I have this podcast, and I'd love to interview you. And he kind of begrudgingly said yes. I don't think he was super excited. But uh, he came on the show, and I interviewed him. It was like episode 50 of uh, the Rails Coach podcast. You can find that on teachmetocode.com. But um, what this taught me was that you can be bold. You can go out and do things that are really scary. You can find opportunities in these places where you're not really sure what's going to happen next, or where you feel like you might get shot down, or you might fail. But you have to be bold. You have to go out there and just take charge and be excited and find these opportunities. And this also affected the way that I code. And I started taking more risks in the projects that I would accept, or in the way that I would approach specific problems. And this led to a lot of different things. I must have started like five ORMs. Uh, Jeremy knows how much work that is. Um, but you know, it, it, it was really an opportunity for me to grow. And it, it led me to other places in my career, in my coding, and in my professional life. The other thing that it taught me, going back to the incidents with Greg and James, was that sometimes you have to ask for help. Okay. So you might get stuck. He got stuck. And uh, my wife went to help him out and then stopped and said, get the camera. <laughs> and so, yeah. Um, but yeah, his foot was stuck in the drain, and we just popped him out right after that. But, but you may get stuck, right? You may, you may find that I don't know what to do next. I don't know where to go. I don't know how to proceed. And. If you ask for help, what you'll find is that a lot of people want you to succeed. So sometimes you'll find a mentor. Sometimes you'll find people who are willing to give you money or resources. Uh, one incident that comes to mind is uh, with Teach Me to Code. Before I was doing Teach Me to Code, uh, my friend Eric was doing Teach Me to Code, Eric Berry. And he started it, and he started reaching out to a bunch of us in the community to start making videos for his video series. And so I put one together on Rails routing. It's really old. Don't go watch it. Um, but what happened was I did the video, and then I started tweeting and blogging about 
some of the things that I had struggled with. You know, I, I didn't have a good mic, and I didn't really have, I'd use a trial version of software to record the video. And I got this email out of the blue from Telestream. Telestream is the company that does ScreenFlow. Who here uses ScreenFlow, anybody? Yeah, awesome company, great product. Um, and they sent me a free license for ScreenFlow and a $200 microphone to record my screencasts. Um, I've also, over the years, I've asked for help in finding work. Um, I've asked for donations to the podcasts. And what I found is that, you know, all of the listeners, all of the people who are involved in the shows, uh, David Brady's found me work a few times. If you ask for help, people just will come out and help you. And I found this even for people that don't have a platform or people that listen to them. I mean, some of this stuff happened when I didn't have anybody listening to me. And so if you take the opportunity to find people who want you to succeed and you ask for help, you'll get it. Um, one other thing that I've seen is when other people ask me for help, and this is kind of the reverse, but a lot of times I wind up saying things that are way smarter than I thought, right? And so sometimes the help will come when you're when you have a sounding board, it's like rubber ducking, you know, where you have a duck on your desk and you talk to the duck and you explain the problem and then the solution comes to your mind. And, and that happens pretty commonly. I mean, some of the things that people tweet that I said on the shows, I didn't even know that I knew that stuff before I said it. And so um, just by asking for help or discussing the issues with people will give you opportunities to learn and to grow. And so that's just another um, example of some of the things that I've learned over the last few years uh, doing these podcasts. Another thing that you want to do is experiment. And we, you know, we've had, I've listened to talks about like experiment driven development or uh, using science, scientific methods for exploring different, um, different aspects of code. Uh, there are a few people that really inspire me to experiment. Dave Thomas is one of those. I mean, every time I talk to the guy, it's just like I feel all creative again. Um, the last episode of Ruby Rogues, we had him on, and there's a lot of that in there. Um, in the business, um, I have a friend, Stephen Robinson. He runs rubynow.com, and he encouraged me to actually split the sponsorships into levels and to charge more for the first one and you know, charge differently for the different sponsorship levels. And, you know, just to experiment with them and see what worked. And that worked out very nicely. And I've, you know, I've tweaked that a little bit as time goes on. Uh, one other thing that I've really learned from Ruby Rogues, and this comes down a lot more to more of the social areas of Ruby Rogues, I don't know if people really realize how diverse a group we are. Um, you know, beyond the obvious things, you know, gender and race. Uh, over the years, I mean, we've had very different political views, religious views, uh, views on the way the world works, the ways that the world should work. And having the opportunity to actually explore those areas and have a safe place to talk about these ideas um, with the different experiences, not just in code, but in life, has really been a tremendous blessing for me. And in some ways, it's strengthened the stances that I have that are different from the other rogues. And in other ways, it's really helped me to understand why people think the way they think, and then to approach my own thinking and change the way that I think about things. And you get this in code, and I think we come to conferences to kind of get these ideas but I encourage you when you get these ideas or when you talk to somebody with a different background than you or different uh, lifestyle than you, that you take the opportunity to really go explore that and experiment with it. I mean, even if it's just a mental experience, experiment. You know, I'm not gonna go do things that don't line up with my values, but I can think about it and I can think about where that would take me. And I can really come to understand where people are at. And uh, this is something that really came out in the Ruby Rogues um, retreat that we did a few years ago. 
uh, we had the opportunity to all get together in one house and just talk. And we were working on a book that never materialized. But ultimately, we really did get to explore these different areas of, of where other people are at. You know, and, and we, we did have a very interesting group. I mean, um, if you ever want to find somebody with a very interesting background, go talk to Katrina Owen. It's just, just fascinating, some of the things that she's been through. Um, James Gray is another person where, you know, with some of the health challenges and things that he's had in his life, and he's given talks on this, and you can go look them up. But, you know, just imagine how that affects the way that he approaches life and approaches code and approaches his family. There, there's just so much to learn. And having this opportunity to kind of experience things in a small way through the way that they live is very interesting. I'm going to talk a little bit about how we got into Ruby Rogues. So as some of you may or may not know, I'm a big fan of the Twit uh, network. Uh, does anyone here listen to those podcasts? Yeah, one or two people. Um, so I'm a big fan of Leo Laporte. Um, sometimes he says dumb crap, but everybody does that. So um, for the most part, though, it's just interesting, stimulating conversation about technology. And I had been podcasting for about three years. And I'd been thinking for a while that it would be really nice if we had a Twit-style show, which, is, which means that you bring in a bunch of panelists and you talk about the topics or the news of the day or whatever in technology. And I thought that would be really cool for Ruby. But I don't know why, but I never actually pulled the trigger on that. And then one day, James tweeted on Twitter. I guess, I guess that's redundant, tweeted on Twitter. But uh, James tweeted, and he said, hey, look, it'd be really cool if we had this panel discussion on Ruby. And of course, I replied back, I've been thinking the same thing. And so we started to pull people together, and pretty soon we had a panel. Now that panel stayed together for all of like three months before you know, we had people drop off and we replaced them with new people. And so we lost Aaron Patterson and Peter Cooper, but picked up Avdi Grimm and Josh Susser, uh, who are some of my favorite people in the whole world. And so um, we started Ruby Rogues. That was four years ago next week, I think. And it was just, it was just awesome. And uh, we've had a good run. We've, we've really been enjoying uh, hanging out. We've since replaced some of those folks with other folks. So now we have Jessica and Coraline and Saran on the show. And I, I don't know if David has anywhere else to go. So, you know, it's, it's just this tremendous opportunity for us to, to sit down and talk and, and really explore where we're at. And so, I, I really like the idea of experimenting and, and you know, taking the things that we're learning from each other and, and just seeing what they're about. I also learned, and I talked a little bit about this with Be Bold, but being confident. So I may have an op opinion that's different from one of the other rogues, and that's totally fine. But it's that intersection and, and talking about where they don't line up that's really the interesting conversation. And a lot of times what we find is that I'm willing to make trade-offs that they won't, or they're willing to make trade-offs that I won't. And sometimes it just turns out that they've experienced something with an idea that I haven't, and so it was a negative thing for them, it was a positive thing when I tried it, and so by exploring these things, we really get to figure things out. But initially, when I was on Ruby Rogues, I was very reticent to disagree with anybody on the show. And a lot of times I'm still pretty diplomatic, but most of the time it's in areas that I really feel like there can be multiple right answers. And so then I just tell people what I think, and then I, you know, I accept that other people may have another opinion. But um, the times that I really struggled with Ruby Rogues or with any of the other shows were the times that I really wouldn't stand up for what I thought or where I wouldn't share my ideas because I didn't think that they merited the same uh, consideration that the other rogues uh, did. And uh, being confident also extends to code. And I, I like drawing these lessons from life to code because it, it, they, a lot of them really apply. So if you have a good idea, share it. If you have a, an approach that you, you feel like can really make things better in your code, then try it, do it. 
I mean, sometimes we're on teams and we can't always do it both ways, but at least bring the idea up and stand behind it until you're convinced that it's not the case. And I think the other side of being confident is also being humble enough to, um, to accept that somebody else may have a better idea. You know, so your idea may be good, theirs may be better, and if they can present evidence to that, then be confident in switching. But um, more and more, the more I really stand up and tell people who I am and share what I'm about, that, that's really where I shine and that's really where I feel like I write my best code. So one other thing I wanna talk about is there have been times, especially since I went freelance, where things got really tight money-wise. And you know, I've gone on the show a few times and said, you know, please donate or whatever, and, or please help me find work. And it's really discouraging to be in that place where you feel like nobody really wants you. And when you're behind the microphone, I mean, I don't see the listeners. And when I go and look up how we're doing with the show, all I see are numbers. And so I know people are out there, and you know, there may be a few people tweeting at me here or there during the day, but a lot of times it's really easy to get discouraged. Um, it's the same thing with our jobs. You know, you feel like you're not progressing the way you want, or you feel like you're stuck where you are, or you feel like nobody recognizes the work you put in. And it's easy to get discouraged. But the thing is, is that ultimately, if you really reach out, if you really look out there, there are people that benefit from what you do. And it's also okay to do something a little bit different. And you know, that's where some of these other shows came out of, was I don't feel like I'm growing a lot in Ruby, so I started an iOS podcast. I mean, that's where iFreaks came from. I wanna learn how to do iOS. And so if you find ways to kind of shortcut uh, the discouragement, then you can really reach beyond where you're at. And uh, back when I was doing Rails Coach and Teach Me to Code, Teach Me to Code did have, you know, at least several hundred people that were watching the screencast regularly. Um, Rails Coach, I don't think, ever got over like 150 to 200 people listening to it at a time. And I really started to feel like Okay, I don't know if anybody cares, but ultimately, for the people that did care, and I did get phone calls from people wanting to hire me and things like that, if, if you make a difference for one or two people in a major way, it really, it really, um, it can make a difference for you. In fact, that's, that's the next thing that I wanted to talk about. So, uh, one of my favorite stories about making a difference, we had Greg Bogus on the show. Uh, I don't know how many of you remember that episode. You talked about mental illness and depression. And he has a pretty, it, it's kind of a scary story about his depression and, you know, and then he, gets, he got through it and kind of reached a point where he, you know, he's healthy and happy now. But it's something that I had never thought about. Well, um, last year, I went to a conference called Agile Roots, which is a conference in Utah about Agile development. And one of the staff members there, during the lightning talks, because they had like four people sign up for lightning talks, and then they were like, please, come, come talk. So he got up and he, he said, I listened to that episode. Now this isn't something that I feel like I did, other than maybe highlight the conversation a little bit by getting him onto the show, uh, myself and the other rogues. Um, but he listened to that episode and he was in a similar place. And so he went and he got help. And he's like, my, my life is better. I have a better relationship with my wife. I, you know, we, we now have two kids. We feel, you know, I mean, all of these things that made a major difference for him. You know, and I've heard other people that they listen to an episode about some technical topic and then they go and explore it. They kind of become an expert in that area and then they get a better job. You know, they move into a better life. They move into a better place. And it's these conversations that I think really make the difference from Ruby Rogues and the other podcasts that, that we're involved with is that 
if you, if you, you don't have to start the conversation, but if we can shine a light on the areas that make differences for other people and have those conversations, and sure, some of them are use caching in your Rails app, your life will be better. And some, some of them are, you know, go get help for depression or, you know, be more aware of the minority or marginalized groups in our community. And all of these things make a difference to make things better for somebody. And so I, I don't take credit necessarily for starting the conversations, but in a lot of cases, we've been able to have the conversations or continue the conversations in a more public way, and it really does make a difference for people. But honestly, and this is the thing that I really want you to take away, is that if, if you're writing a blog post about how to handle an error or a blog post about how you struggle at work or you put up a podcast about something you're interested in or you start making videos or something like that, there's somebody out there that needs that information. And whether it makes a difference in their home life or it makes a difference in their, uh, their other endeavors, you're making a difference, you're doing good. And I think it's really important to be able to do that. And so all of the other lessons that I've been going through, I mean, they all lead into this, is that you can make a difference and people matter. I have to say that there are a couple of main reasons why I do the podcast now. And I kind of talked about having these conversations. But the conversations don't just happen with me. I mean, they happen with people like Coraline and with uh, Jessica and David and Avdi and Saran. You know, they've happened in the past with uh, Josh and James and Peter and Aaron. They happen on the other shows with, with a lot of other friends of mine. And to be honest, the biggest draw for me at this point doing the podcasts is that I get to talk to these people every week. I get to have conversations with my friends, with people that I care about, every week about stuff that I care about, at least most of the time. And it makes, it makes a big difference. And, and these people matter to me. Um, you know, Coraline was out at Mountain West Ruby Conference and you know, it was terrific to say hi and spend some time together. Um, I got to see Jessica because she came out for the Pluralsight um, Author Summit. And so I had dinner with her and her husband. And it's these connections. It's the connections that you all are making here at RailsConf that matter. I mean, sure, you're going to pick stuff up from the sessions, and that's, that I, that's why your employer sent you here, I'm assuming. And you're going to be able to make a difference in your work. But in the grand scheme of things, the, the people that we meet and the connections that we make are what matter. And so that, that really kind of explains the, the rest of the reason why I do the shows, beyond being able to talk about stuff I like and talk to people that I like about it, is that then I get to have the conversations with you folks. So I get the opportunity to come out here and, and meet interesting people. I mean, I can name a few people in here. You know, I met Zach the other day. Um, I met Jeremy at Mountain West Ruby Conference. I've known Jim for a couple of years. And it's these connections, these, these opportunities. I can't see you in the corner, so if I know you, I'm sorry. Um, but it's these opportunities to meet new people and make these connections and, and feel like a community that, that really make the difference. And then being able to, to give back and, and make a difference in, in their lives in small or big ways. That's what, that's what really matters. So um, I just encourage you, if you feel inspired to go out and do something, it doesn't have to be something big. Um, one of the things that I did in the past was I wrote a little gem that uh, uses Project Honeypot. I don't know if you're familiar with the, the project, but um, it, it identifies IP addresses for spammers. You know, write a little gem. Uh, you know, it doesn't have to be a big thing. It doesn't have to be... Uh, scary or frightening. You don't have to feel overwhelmed by the people that you want to talk to, but you know, have the conversations at work. That makes a difference. But whatever it is, you know, find ways to encourage people and, and make people feel like they matter. And uh, you've, you've gotten to see a lot of pictures of the people that matter most to me. Uh, these are my kids. My wife took the picture. She doesn't like taking pictures of herself, so I didn't have any funny ones to share of her. 
But uh, anyway, I'm Charles Max Wood, um, at CMaxW on Twitter. And that's my email address. If you have any feedback, if you want ideas or encouragement or um, help getting started, just let me know. And uh, that's pretty much it. One other thing, though, is that we're working on new material for our slides next year. So. You have a question? Picks? <laughs> Thanks. So uh, I've got about 10 minutes for questions, which is kind of where I wanted to go. So I'm, I'm happy to answer questions about the stuff that I talked about here, or Ruby Rogues, or podcasting, or anything else. But I reserve the right to say I don't know. So Jim's asking how we record the Ruby Rogues episode with all of us being in different places. Um, yeah, we just record over Skype. And uh, if you want to see the rest of that setup, I have, if you go to teachmetocode.com, it's the last video I put on there. It's about two years old, but I'm still using the same setup, more or less. And that'll show you how I record it and things like that. But yeah, we record over Skype. And uh, my internet connection has been slowly degrading. Thank you, Comcast. But we're switching on Saturday, so <laughs> hopefully it'll get better. But, but yeah. So yeah, we record over Skype. I have lots of ideas of things you can do. So if, you're, if you want to contribute to the community and you're not quite sure where to go, just come talk to me and we'll, we'll figure out what you're about. All right, I don't see any other questions. So uh, feel free to come up and get stickers. Um, if you want Ruby Rogue stickers, uh, just tweet at me and then I'll see if I can uh, mail a couple out. But. <laughs>